Hello, this is Alan Elliott, and this is Tutorial 16, Cleaning Data, Part 3. In this tutorial, we're going to continue with the example that we uh, had in the last tutorial, uh, continuing from the file called messy4.sass on page 155. In this tutorial, we're going to learn how to create uh, correct date and time values. There are many uh, techniques for handling date and time issues, and this tutorial provides a sampling of the techniques, but this is all the ways you could do it through. There are other ways. So the date and time uh, that the subject arrived and left the clinic are needed to calculate how long it took to serve each patient. However, there's a problem, and that, that is that the values in our current data set are stored in character type. The following example illustrates how to convert the character values, values to SAS data, uh, date and time values, and how to combine them into a single date time value. The date uh, values are stored as character values, as I said. Uh, for example, 2-7-2005 is in a character variable. And so we could use the input function to convert them to dates, as shown in the example below. Notice we input, we're using the trim function to get rid of any blanks around date arrived, and we are converting it using the MMDDYY10 dot uh, format. And the result is that we have a value called date arrived to. Uh, we're also going to convert the time value that's in a different uh, column. The time value is also in a character uh, variable, and it's in the form of like 11-18-00-A, or P for PM. So the first thing we want to do is uh, locate uh, the blank between the numbers and either the A or the P for AM or PM. And so we use the find function and we set I equal to the location of the blank uh, using, the, again, the find function. And then we use that value I and the substring function to extract the first part of the character value up to I minus 1. So that allows, that uh, ends uh, up with a variable called time arrive that just has the 11-18-00 in it without the A or the P. But we also want to determine if uh, the value did have an A or a P in there. In this case, we're going to look and see if it has a P. Uh, and we, again, use the find function. And in this case, uh, when we use this, uh, it implies that uh, if it's PM, then uh, p is going to be equal to some uh, uh, integer, else if p is equal to 0, then the result must be am. We continue with the conversion of time by uh, looking at time arrive 2 and converting it using the input function with the time 8 fun uh, format. And we, arrive, we get a value called time arrive t. Uh, then we adjust the time arrive t according to whether or not uh, it's PM. If it's PM, we need to add 43,200 seconds uh, in order to make it the right time. And so as you can see there, we check to see if P is equal to, grade, uh, to zero, then we, uh, uh, and time arrived T is less than 43,200, which means it's before noon, then we add uh, 43,200 seconds to the time. Uh, then we uh, convert uh, seconds uh, to a, a value to a date time SAS value using the DHMS function. So as you can see here, the DHMS function, the first uh, argument is the date arrived to. The 00, zero is uh, where we would normally put uh, hours and minutes, but uh, it's all in the va a variable called time arrived T at the very end, which is the number of seconds. And so uh, putting all that together, we get a value that is a date time value. It has both the date and the time uh, in the one variable. And then we give it a label. Here is the code to do that. If you'll open up messy5.sass, you'll see this code here, and it uh, does the same thing we just described. It's just uh, all together in that. When we run that, we see that uh, we have, uh, notice the date arrive 5, the time arrive 5, which are in text format. And we convert it, and then we're, we at the very right, we have the date and time arrived uh, variable where it has the date and time all together in one single variable. Uh, to complete the calculations, we need to uh, do the same thing for the time left uh, variable. And so here's some code that would do that, and basically it's the same thing we did for the previous example. Uh, once we uh, uh, have that value, 
we can then look at the difference between the arrive time and the left time. Uh, and we're going to use the INTCK function with the min argument, which means give me the number of minutes between these two values. And we're going to call that stay minutes. If we divide that value by 60 and round it off, then we get the number of hours stayed in the clinic. We always want to check our results on anything like this. And so we run the results and we see that for the most part, it looks okay. However, there's still some issues here. We get a negative time for someone and we get a really large time for other people. And most of these uh, errors because of typos uh, in the original data set uh, entering dates and times. We're going to uh, assume we don't know how to fix that at this point. So we're just going to make a use an if statement to uh, say if stay hours is less than zero or greater than 45, then we're going to uh, turn the stay hours uh, to a missing value. All right, we also want to look for duplicate records and we can do that with the uh, uh, code in discover3.sas on page 158. If you open that up, you can see that it does a proc freak uh, on the uh, cleaned uh, data set so far uh, for table subject and it outputs uh, the information to a file called frequency count. This is going to give us how many uh, subject IDs there are. And then we look and uh, see how many uh, of those subject IDs are where the count is greater than uh, one. That means that there's a duplicate. So those are the only ones we're interested in is when where count is equal to one or greater than equal to one or greater than one. So uh, we, we run that and we see that there was indeed one uh, subject, subject number 26, that was uh, had a, a count of two. So we know that's incorrect research we found that number 27 was miscoded as 26 therefore we can use an if statement uh, as shown at the bottom to recode that value to 27 and clean up this problem so that's really all the cleanup we're going to do for that uh, data set uh, here's sort of a list of the things that we did uh, and you could use this list uh, if you have a data set with some issues in there you may not have all these issues but uh, these are the kinds of things you would check on uh, to make sure that you clean up your data set to the best you can. And finally, the complete code for all the things we did is in a file called messyall.sass. It'd be a good idea to review this code to see how each fix builds on, on each other. And uh, you can also see how this code provides an audit for fixes so you can verify them later uh, and uh, show people how changes were made if you need to. And that's the end of tutorial 16. The next topic will be using ODS.